we set the scene, Sam has made this fire and it smoked and it drew the attention of the passing uh, Gondorians. And right, the Gondorians right. are like, oh, I, the smoke's coming from over this direction. And lo and behold, they found uh, Frodo and Sam, right? Just to set right. the scene. But when they stumble on Frodo and Sam, a Faramir's like, uh, declare yourself and your errand. Yes. Were you going to say something? Well, yeah, did you say, do you have anything to, I, I thought that Faramir said, do you have anything to, to declare? And Frodo's like, yes, I love herbs and stewed rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> sorry <laughs> anyway so no he didn't have anything to declare in that sense but um right he declared himself now i was quite dumbstruck by how much frodo declared and how much Fl frodo revealed at this moment okay uh, he says as for us we are hobbits of the shire and as soon as he said as soon as he said that i was like oh wait a minute aren't the aren't the nazgul looking specifically for hobbits from the shire <laughs> The Gondorians are not Nazgul. Right, right. But, but you never maybe know. They're, maybe they're working for the Nazgul. Yeah, maybe. Probably uh, Again, I, I th you know what? I think green, like the how they described them in green. like <laughs> They're in green. But as dumb as it sounds. No, no. I, no like I, I, I agree with you. I, I know exactly why you're saying that. Because in Tolkien lore, it's like, if you're wearing green, you're probably you're probably pretty good. Yeah. Like, if you're uh, wearing it, black and red, not so much. Right. But, 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 but green, browns, and stuff like that, a lot of them yeah. are, um, a lot of those colors are related it's like wearing to. A, it's uh, like being a elf. cowboy with a white hat. Yeah. It's, but it's very elvish, you know? So it's like, oh, yeah. I mean, you know. Like a ranger, so, like a, like an Aragorn yes. would wear green. And right, green. right, right, right. Yeah, and 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 uh, um, Bilbo had a green hood when he went on his adventure. Well, there you he was go. Given a green hood, so. But be that as it may, even though they're wearing green and they look like dowdy men that remind him of Boromir, it still seems to me, or it seemed to me at first when I first read this, like wow, he's really giving the game away. And I thought, you know, their whole mission depended on secrecy and you know maintaining very strict opsec yeah yeah i mean he he, he was kind of uh throwing out his uh, street cred for sure you know mm. like i came from uh elrond he talked about boromir and 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 actually now that i'm thinking about it he revealed that aragorn is uh king returned the fact that he mentions aragorn he mentions they come from rivendell all this stuff i thought would be kind of top secret you know what though yes but but i'm thinking about it while you're going over this and and i've got i i don't know i don't know if lying or trying to worm their way out of this situation would have been the best thing to do anyway you know what i'm talking about it's kind of like all right we're captured right right our only chance of of escaping is if i you know show my credentials you know or or you know continuing on with the journey okay. all right what i haven't mentioned yet is it's almost like the gondorians have a have a hostage they don't have a hostage not yet but they yeah. mentioned the creeping golem on the one hand he's like that uh don't please don't kill golem he's he's our companion but we're, we're also not responsible for him yeah, yeah yeah it's like they're they're vouching for Gollum, right yeah but i'm thinking well birds of a feather i like what kind of story are you actually well, giving me and i feel like one of the reasons why frodo is impelled to betray or uh reveal more information than he otherwise would is i think he's like really intent on saying look our companion Gollum, even though you just said he kind of looked like an orc or a friend of orcs or a or someone working for the orcs, trust me, we're not. Because let me just list off all these kind of friendly related uh, people and places. And by knowing that we are associated with these quote unquote good guys, 
you won't think that Gollum is a bad guy, even though he looks very shifty. I don't know how the Gondorians view the el elves. You know, not everybody looks favorably upon elves. You know, particularly right. like uh, the elves of Lothlorien. You know, they do say, "No, you're not elves." Uh, Elves do not walk in Athelion in these days, and elves are wondrous fair to look upon, or so is said. So it seems like yeah. they actually don't know much about elves other than that they're wondrous fair to look upon. And then there's this kind of slightly funny moment where Sam's like, meaning we're not. Yeah. And we're not. The, the, guy should, the guy should have been like, well, yeah, that's what I mean. You're not. Yeah. No, you guys are pretty ugly. <laughs> especially you, Sam. Your butt yeah, ugly. especially you. Like at a scale from one to ten, like you're probably a two and a half. Uh, I'm sure you're <laughs> quite uh, handsome and 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 you know where you're from. But I'm sure you're good with uh, maybe cooking, stewing conies. Uh, just yeah, to, stewing conies. Actually, you're not. To, apparently, you're not great with fires because uh, you you gave your whole your whole uh, thing away. But but th that actually re reminds me of another obsec issue. Because on the one hand, they're, they're, Frodo, I think, is kind of being uncareful or less careful than I think he should be with yeah. the, the details of their mission. But the whole reason they're, they have to explain themselves in this way and the whole reason that the Gondorians are staring at them, blades drawn, is because just a few minutes ago, Sam also made some boneheaded OPSEC moves by making this fire and stewing conies. So right, it's like right. one one bad choice uh, brought about another. Yeah, absolutely. I do wish they would have called instead of Coney's. Uh, I wish he would have been making Haas and Pfeffer. <laughs> <laughs> and and then uh, Frodo could have woken up and say said, "Bring me Haas and Pfeffer." Yeah. Bring me my Haas and Pfeffer. Right away. Haas and Pfeffer. So as soon as Faramir who. Frodo doesn't know from Adam, but as soon no. as he says, as soon as he reveals that he knows Boromir and that he's their captain general, I think Frodo very risk, riskily says, are the riddling words known to you that Boromir brought to Rivendell? Yeah. yeah. I'm like, Frodo, I mean, this is like literally top secret information because in the, in the, in the riddling words, it mentions the ring. The last line of the riddling words, or the second well, line. Well, it mentions Isildur's bane, but right, it doesn't. which is the ring. Right. But it's not saying that there's a ring that, uh, you know. <laughs> By the way, there's this ring. There's this ring, yeah. Um, here's the thing, though. Um, the the fact that, like, that's, le like, this is, like, less, not disturbing, but this is, like, 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 obviously, Faramir knows about the the riddle. Not only does he know it, um, but he invented it. When yeah. Frodo said, "Seek for the sword that was broken in Imladris, it dwells," F Faramir should have been like, "Do I know those words? Those are my words, buddy. I, I, I wrote those. I, yeah, like I wrote that song. Yeah." That that, like, that was um, my dream even before it was Boromir's dream. They came right, to me. Right. The he should have said, he, it would have been cool to be like, I wrote that song. And he'd be like, compadre. No, um, so anyway. Right. But the, 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 the thing is, though, is that he kind of said, oh, the sword that was broken, uh, Aragorn has that. You know that Aragorn's the the re, re, the king returning. You know, wait. Who, I mean, who, in, in not so many words, right? Yeah, Aragorn, whom I named, is the bearer of the sword that was broken. Said Frodo. Is that what yeah, you're it's, yeah, yeah. So and I we mean, anybody who knows are the that, halflings that the rhyme spoke of. Right, right. So, so but the, the, go ahead. No, but I'm saying like the fact that like basically they're like, oh well, the sword that was broken, uh, like that's the king that coming back to return. You know what I'm talking about? It's mm -hmm. like Aragorn didn't even. Ar it, it, so you're saying really Aragorn, tough. Aragorn didn't even claim that himself. And here's Frodo like declaring, Hey, this is the prophecy. Right. Right. But Aragorn did like when, when he, when Aragorn got the, uh, the, 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 um, Palantir, mm -hmm. right. And Gandalf like, you know, ceremoniously gave him 
you know, the Palantir bowed and, and like, this is a return of the many things that you should be getting back, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> right. It still isn't general knowledge that, that Aragorn is coming to uh, Minas Tirith to uh, claim right. the throne, so to speak. You know what I'm talking about? Right. Um, so, yeah, it's just, that that's kind of a weird thing that Frodo said about Yeah, Aragorn. because, again, like, not only is destroying the ring kind of um, the, 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 I think the, the, the plan to destroy the ring relies on secrecy and for not very many people to know that that's what's actually happening. Um, but even, even, uh, at this point, Aragorn, until he can muster his strength, like you don't want to, you don't want everyone to know that, oh, here's this King who isn't, at, who isn't yet at the command of armies. He's still just kind of this way, way, wayfarer. Um, yeah, yeah. It's like, keep his cover unblown, you know, keep, or, him, or, from, keep him incognito, keep him incognito, keep him. Yeah like anonymous keep him anonymous or yes, keep him anonymous yes i that yes. was gonna say that yeah so yeah uh, it just struck me as odd but here's the here's how i think that in the grand scheme of things this was probably a good master stroke of intuitive fortune that frodo revealed all this stuff right because even though we know, having read all the books, that Faramir is kind of a good guy, like at first he, there's no real reason to trust him, especially since he kind of looks like Boromir. Right, that, right. You know, here's the guy that might be slightly untrustworthy. Um, but I think by mentioning Boromir, and especially by mentioning, like suddenly and unprovokedly, like mentioning the the riddle words, the riddling words. Yeah. Um, it immediately wins over Faramir and keeps Faramir from doing what is revealed in the next chapter is Faramir's actual duty. So Faramir, so if you, you I'm going to jump, I'm going to do a, the crazy thing and jump ahead a few pages to the okay. next chapter. Because when he interrogates Frodo in the next chapter, uh, Sam's kind of pissing him off. And he says, Faramir says to Sam, were I as hasty as you, I might have slain you long ago, for I am commanded to slay all whom I find in this land without leave of the Lord of Gondor. But I do not slay man or beast needlessly. So, like, here's these intruders. And so if, like, he might have just slain them and ask, kill first, ask questions later. But yes. Frodo, by some miraculous uh, instinct, was like, I should just reveal to this man as as much as I can to try to get yeah, on his it, good side. I've got a question for you. <laughs> so Frodo and Sam, okay, so Bar Faramir said that, like, I'm commanded to slay, blah, blah, blah. Like, And say he did slay Frodo and Sam, oh, right? <laughs> and then... Aragorn comes to the city. And it's like, oh, King Aragorn. It's like, yeah, I gave these guys permission to, to be in, in a, a Ithilien. Like, they had permission from the king of the land. From the actual so, king. Then from the actual king. So, not so then some, they would have they would have charged Faramir with murder and insubordination. Right. So it's a good thing he didn't kill him. Imagine that turn of events. Yeah. But how's, how about this? So if, if Faramir had killed... Frodo and Sam, he would have found the ring on Frodo's yeah. broken, mangled corpse, claimed it, or thought about claiming it. Faramir would have been... Have known, but he wouldn't have known what it was. It's just... If he for, wouldn't have known hard. what it was. So he would have but gotten you know this ring. Have? Huh? You know who would have known who it was? Uh, Aragorn? Nope. Gollum. Gollum would have been like, all right! <laughs> <laughs> but how would have Gollum? I don't have to go to Shelob. I can I can eat fish three times a day starting now. Ah, yeah, yeah. But what? Okay, this this is speculative Tolkienism. So let's speculate. Yeah, let's so say let's speculate. Uh, Faramir does his duty, kills Sam and Frodo. Seems a little harsh, but that's his duty, right? So would I mean? I assume Gollum would know about it because he's probably skulking and spying on the periphery of this drama. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So right. would would Gollum be like, 
okay, Master's gone, but now this this dummy who knows knows nothing about this ring now has this ring. Surely I'll be able to sneak in while he's sleeping and, and grab it from him. Is he going yeah, to try to skulk and, and take the ring from Faramir? Well, here's a, here's a, here's the thing though too. So like, say that, say Faramir has Frodo and Sam killed. It, would it be Faramir who actually slayed him, or do, would it be like, hey, uh, Boris and uh, and 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 um, you know Adlon. Nigel? Yeah, go Boris and, and Nigel, right. Gra- go grab these two and uh, take them to the uh, you know to to the you know tree tie them up slit their throats and uh yeah you're, you're gonna be slain so the ring could have ended up like with these two like you know gondorian <laughs> henchmen yeah, yeah like where it's like oh i go through his pockets they're not gonna need it anymore right and um <laughs> <laughs> and be like, you know, and that hello, hello. What's this little trinket? Oh, a tiny little trinket. Oh, I think nice I'll, souvenir I'll, for the neighbors back home. I'll um, give it to. I'll give it to me wife. I'll give it to the missus, and then like not knowing what he had, right? And then some random queen of Gondor, some random woman of Gondor becomes queen of all the land. Yeah, what would happen? <laughs> you know, what I'm it's like, <laughs> like all these. So it's a good thing Frodo was honest, or else you know. That's what I'm saying. Had, so like, it, it struck me as a little bit like, what, Frodo? But now read the second chapter and you're like, wow, it's a good thing he did like kind of pull no punches and just state, like list his credentials. Yeah. Yeah. Because it wasn't yeah, like, like said, Frodo like, to brag. Going through that, it's, I think that was Frodo's really only option is to be as honest as he could about yeah. everything but what Isildur's bane is, you know? Right, and he did. He specifically said, well, I don't want to talk about that part. I actually don't have a whole lot to say other than that he sees an Oliphant. He does see an Oliphant. Um, and Which the, is, yeah. like, <laughs> it's, it's like, well, what are the odds? <laughs> you know, right. Like, he's talking about an Oliphant, just, and then here you go. Maybe Sam's the magic. Maybe Sam's, like, more magical than he thinks because he just yeah. was singing about them, and he it's like he conjured the Oliphant. Oh! <laughs>